Hi everybody, welcome back to Julie at Home. Today I'm going to share with you resources that we used when learning about colonial times in America. So from about, about the 16 and 1700s. This is aimed at elementary school children. My children were in uh, like first going into second and third going into fourth grade when we did these and because we kind of did it in the spring through the fall of the next year. But I do think that many of these resources can be useful over a broad range of ages. This is going to be a two part series, I guess. This first video is going to focus on colonial times from the earliest English coming over at Jamestown in the early 1600s through about the mid 1700s. We're going to end with the French and Indian War. And then the second part will be on the American Revolution and the creation of the United States government. We had already done a unit on the Native Americans living in North America at the time. So I really encourage you, if you haven't already done that, to look at that video um, because I think it's an important context before talking about Europeans arriving that uh, there were already people living here and um, that obviously comes up as we're learning about the interactions between the native people and the Europeans. I do my best to link everything below. If there's links, they may be at affiliate links, so thank you if you choose to use those. I did use our history curriculum for this. This is Curiosity Chronicles, and this one is the Snapshots of Early Modern History, Volume 1. There's also Volume 2. I believe everything in this video, part one here, is in this uh, Volume 1 book. So I will be mentioning uh, Curiosity Chronicles chapters as I go that link to the various areas we were studying. So as I said, we started with Jamestown. That is covered in chapter 12 here. So we started with that. Along with Jamestown, we have You Wouldn't Want to Be an American Colonist, um, which is uh, the You Wouldn't Want to Be series is something that my kids really enjoy in general. So I keep getting them. Um, but it's from the perspective of somebody going over um, and and Jamestown was founded yep in 1607. It's in uh, current day Virginia in the United States. And I'm not 100% sure, but there may be like a historic site there. So if you live anywhere near there, that might be something to check out. We are closer to um, Massachusetts, which is where the Mayflower landed in Plymouth in 1620, I believe. I'm hoping I got that right. Um, and so I do have several resources on the Mayflower and on the Pilgrims. Um, they didn't call themselves that, they called themselves the Saints. As you may know, they came over for religious reasons, to practice uh, their form of Christianity the way they wanted to. Um, so first I will say the best thing we did is we actually did a field trip to Plymouth Pawtuxet. It is fantastic if you are within driving range, I highly recommend it. Or if you're visiting for some other reason, I highly recommend it. It has a great visitor center with a museum, lots of information. And then they have uh, a model village of Plymouth with um, historical actors playing the parts of the people that were living there. So it's it's really fantastic. And there's also a an area of the village of Pawtuxet, which is the Wampanoag village that was there before um, the Mayflower arrived. They have examples of a summer house and a winter house and a um, how they would do agriculture. I found that really interesting. And they have um, people there, native people, to share some information with you and for you to ask questions. And so I found that wonderful. That was like the best thing we did. But that's not possible for everybody and I know that. So I do have some books. This is my favorite one actually. It's called If You Lived During the Plymouth Thanksgiving by Chris Newell and um, illustrated by Winona Nelson. And it's a newer book and it just gives really, really good information on both the um, people that came over on the Mayflower, here I'll show you the, the contents, as well as the native people and as a side note, I actually originally got this to read um, around Thanksgiving, um, and then we put it as part of this unit because it, it's so helpful, super, super information. Let me show you a little bit more. Um, so it, it like, it's organized in questions that are then answers, and it does have pictures. So, you can see like all different kinds of questions and answers here. So, anyway, that's, very, very good. If you're going to get one book on this, I recommend this one. There's also these wonderful National Geographic books. This one is Mayflower 1620, A New Look at the Pilgrim Voyage. And um, 
I really like this for the pictures. This is pictures of the replica Mayflower. Are they, they call it Mayflower too, I think, that they built. It's in Plymouth Harbor, and actually that's one of the things we did when we visited, is you can actually go on the replica Mayflower. And I believe they actually did the voyage on this ship at some point, some, um, the group did, which is fascinating. But yeah, um, I think it's worth it just for the pictures to give you a sense of life at that time. And then I also have 1621, A New Look at Thanksgiving, um, because I don't, I think I did a little bit on this in a separate, in another video, um, and I might do a whole separate video on this at some point, but, um, the story that we learn about the pilgrims and the Indians in school normally is, is very inaccurate, and so this, um, this is a more accurate portrayal of what happened, um, and also talks a little bit more about the Wampanoag. Um, and, the, and this is, I believe, based on an exhibit or the exhibits based on this in the uh, visitor center at Plymouth Pawtuxet, um, where they have artifacts and they have more information on Thanksgiving as a holiday and how it's evolved. It's recipes in there. So there we go. That's a great one. Now, these two actually had my fourth grader read. So uh, she read these on her own. This is Dog Diaries and this is Dash. There's a bunch of different dog diaries. Um, it's, it tells the story of history from a dog's perspective. So this is about a dog that was on the Mayflower. There were two of them. And they, I looked, they actually were on the Mayflower. So exciting. Okay, then this is a base, this is from the Dear America series, and this is a historical fiction by Catherine Laxey. It's called The Diary of Remember Patient Swipple, A Journey to the New World. So it's about a girl, I think she's 11 or 12 at the time, on the Mayflower. There's a little note at the back um, on like more of the historical context with some pictures. Let me show you. Um, but in general, it's it's a it's a chapter book. I think it's a relatively easy chapter book, not not like a first chapter book, but it's it's a diary, so that makes I think it easier um, or faster to read through. There's short sections there, um, so yeah. So the, both of these, my fourth grader read and then narrated to me what they were about. Finally, moving on from the Mayflower, Curiosity Chronicles chapter 23 and 24 talk more about colonization in different areas of the Americas. So um, in chapter 23, they talk about the Pueblos and they, at that point, the Spanish were colonizing that area. It's the southwestern area of the current United States. And then chapter 24 talks about New France and the French coming over. And I have some additional information on that because we are on, we're near that, that area of the country as well. Um, we live in Vermont and Quebec is the province above us. Um, I have some additional books on Samuel du Champlain, um, which we also live near. Lake Champlain is between Vermont and New York and we live near that. So, um, I thought it was important to cover this. Now there's two books I have on him. This is Christopher Moore Champlain. This has beautiful pictures. There you go. And this one I think was a little bit less dense to read, so we ended up reading this one. Um, but they're, they, either one would be a good choice. I don't think you need both. <laughs> so maybe whichever one you can find uh, more affordably or at your library. There we go. Now this one is the story of William Penn by Aliki, and um, William Penn was a Quaker who came over leading a group of Quakers and um, founded uh, Pennsylvania, and it's William Penn, Pennsylvania, and I specifically included him because, because I'm a descendant of um, people who came over with him on his ship um, and lived in Pennsylvania for many, many generations um, until my grandparents moved out. Um, when they were adults. So um, that's something I really, I, I connect to that. So I really wanted them, my kids to learn about it. I also think he's just like a wonderful person to learn about. I also wanted to do more about the Quakers and history of the Quakers, but I couldn't find many information that was aimed at children. And so I shared with them what I knew. Um, but yeah, I would love to find more resources on that in the future. So if you know of any, let me know in the comments below. 
Chapter 30 in Curiosity Chronicles is about the growth of chattel slavery. And I know this is something that's being talked about a lot right now, whether or not it should be taught. So I just want to put out there that I do teach my kids about this. I teach my kids about slavery and the history of slavery and the treatment of uh, black people in America. I teach my children about native people and their treatment by the uh, colonists who came in. I think it can and should be taught in an age and developmentally appropriate way. And this is not about, you know, guilt or shame. This is about learning full history. If you don't know the history of slavery, if you don't know the history of the Native people, you're not getting a full picture of history. And so you're not understanding what happened in many, many parts of the story is missing pieces. And therefore, you might interpret things incorrectly at that time and later it's like kind of building blocks that you build off of if one is missing you know you're gonna you're gonna fall down because you're not gonna understand what was happening um and also i just say like these are huge these are groups of people these are groups of people living today and their history and it shouldn't be written out we should be teaching it so those are my thoughts and that's why i teach it to my children and with that being said we did that chapter of curiosity chronicles and then we also read born on the water which is a, a beautiful picture book it starts from the perspective of a modern day student, um, a modern day black student, who is the descendant of um, African people that were brought over and enslaved. When schools do like ancestry projects and such, she didn't know what to say. She didn't know where her roots were coming from because, because there's often gaps in, in those histories, in the ancestry for, for these people. So um, it goes through, it's her grandmother tells her a story of her ancestors living in Africa before they were enslaved. Um, and it's really, uh, it, it talks about their joy and um, it does, it, like it, it, obviously it talks about them being stolen and enslaved. So it's not, you know, it is a, um, it is a darker, harder subject, but I think it's done in a totally appropriate way there's no like gratuitous violence or anything i mean there's a um so and this is you know and it just talks about them being enslaved but obviously it gets more hopeful as it moves on and slavery ends in this country and it, kind of, it goes from there and um, talks about the legacy um, that they live on. So I think it was beautifully done and a really good way to introduce this topic. When talking about these harder topics such as, you know, slavery or treatment of indigenous peoples um, or even like wars or things like we're going to talk about the Salem witch trials in a, in a minute, um, I think it's important to let your kids, you know, process their emotions. Um, you're their safe space, like talk it out. Um, Give, give a beat, give a minute for them to process how they're feeling before jumping into the next thing. Um, my kids uh, expressed anger um, at learning about this, and I think that's a completely valid emotion. And they're not really angry at anybody today, um, but um, they're just angry. It made me sad. I would also say give yourself time to process. Some of us are learning things that we never learned in school. Um, so, yeah, just just... Give yourself that time and it's good to have a discussion about it and to use that energy to um if, if you feel like you need to do something with that energy maybe focus it on how we can make the world a better place today and going forward so there we go <laughs> let's keep going i do have another famous person book to share with you and that's benjamin franklin hopefully you've heard of him he is a pretty cool guy now there are several options on books for him this is one that i already had it's a um Ingrid Edgar Dallaire book. Um, I really enjoy their mythology books, their Norse myth and their Greek myth books. Their um, books on, their biographies are a little bit hit and miss. Um, this is one that I will share. I just don't like how they portray some things in some of their other biographies. Um, but this one is generally, I'm generally fine with. And it's just, yeah, it's just a story of Benjamin Franklin's life. Now this could also, I mean, he was also instrumental in um, the American Revolution and the formation of the United States government. So you could put this there as well and I might share it again or mention it again there. Um, but we did this earlier because he was actually quite a bit older than most of the other founding fathers. And so he did a lot of things 
before the revolution. And then I also want to share this famous figures of the early modern era. Era, um, We had this for medieval and I also have another one. Um, and <laughs> it's just kind of fun. It has a lot of people from all over the world in here. So I'm gonna see if I can find, here's, here's Champlain. And so I copied them this time, but you can um, easily cut them out of the book. It comes in like a colored and a non-colored version, um, but I wanted to be able to use it again. And also my kids, um, oh, and it's perforated, I should say too. So it can come out pretty easily. My kids might want to do it again or they might want to do the same one. So I, I like to do that with coloring pages too, just copy things. Oh, there's William Penn. All right, that's just kind of a fun add-on before we move on to another Another slightly heavy topic. Um, so chapter 35 of Curiosity Chronicles talks about religious fervor in the colonies um, and specifically in um, what is now like the Massachusetts area, the Massachusetts colony. Um, and we also read What Were the Salem Witch Trials? For the most part, I like these What Were and Who Was books um, and my kids enjoy them. They're pretty easy reads and they have lots of pictures. And you could assign some of these to children to read on their own. Did I do that at some point? I have some more that I assigned to my daughter for the American Revolution. I can't remember if one was a Who Was book. But yeah, um, who, what were the Salem Witch Trials? I've always found them really fascinating. I don't know about you. So I already knew about them from as a child. So, And that's another place we didn't actually get to visiting Salem, but that's another place that's kind of a good place to visit if you are in the area. Um, there is a like witch trial museum and then there's some other like witchy themed things because the town has really taken that on. And we also watched another documentary. I will see if I can find it. It was, it was like, um, I think it was an episode of a TV show that talks about like mysteries and history or something. Um, and uh, it, it talked about finding the like exact location where um, the like hangings occurred where the where the hanging tree was um and they've like they did a bunch of research and like located where that area is and i think now there's a memorial there um so that's what the show was about and so that that in of itself was interesting um but there's there's lots of interesting things on the salem witch trials so i encourage you to look at that now salem was one that's talked about a lot but there were also other witch trials happening in the colonies at the time so you can look to see if there's some information on one closer to your area before I get to pirates, I just want to share a few other things. Um, one is we made a recipe. Um, I, I think we made two recipes. We made pumpkin pie and we made an apple and cheese pie. I got both those recipes from Max at Tasting History and we watched the videos as well that go along with them. So I will link those below. I had my kids do little samplers and um, I can't seem to find them now, which is driving me crazy because I wanted to frame them and I know I put them somewhere. So they just did little samplers based on what colonial, mainly girls would have done um, for many years actually from colonial times through I think like the 1800s. Um, girls, young girls would do like little samplers um, to show their embroidery skills. So I had them do um, like a really easy cross stitch version. They didn't 100% love it. I think my daughter enjoyed it more than my son did. Um, he doesn't love like needle activities for the most part, but um, they did it and it was good. I also got a quill and ink. I actually splurged and got this little ink pot from Townsend's um, and we tried to write with a quill and ink. Well, I should say I really wanted them to and they really didn't want to. So I wrote with a quill and ink. Um, I actually have additional quill. I got additional quills and like they didn't want to use it. So um, I did it for fun um, and I just like wrote some random things in it. Anyway, I thought that was really fun and a fun activity you could do. I also had some more parchmenty paper that I did it on um, and they just wrote on that. So um, my daughter for some reason decided to use a Sharpie, but she wrote, I had her write like a letter um, as a narration about the Salem Witch Trials, just kind of saying like what happened, uh, what was happening, like writing from a perspective of a, of a girl living there at the time. Um, and for some reason she did it in um, Sharpie, but that's like the kind of parchmenty paper I had. And if you t check out Tasting History, but also the Townsend channel, there are tons of recipes you can try. Um, you can also try things like making butter, making cheese, like so many fun activities you could do in the kitchen around um, learning about this time period and you know early colonial time. Also, if you are living anywhere on the East Coast of the United States from you know basically Maine to Georgia, um, there are probably some sort of historic sites related to the, um, you know, 
related to this time in history when the Europeans were coming in colonizing. Um, so I would, I would definitely look into that and find what's in your area. When we were living in the DC area, my kids were little, we did make one day trip down to Williamsburg, Virginia, which I also absolutely love. And if you live anywhere in driving distance of that, I recommend that. Let's talk about pirates. All right. My kids, especially my son, were very excited for this. So I have a couple fun resources. Um, the first I'm going to share here is P is for Pirate. It's an alphabet book. And um, these are great because they have great pictures. And then they also, um, they teach you about relevant things. So um, A is for the articles or the code of conduct. And so it just, you could read this, it's rhyming, but it also has a lot more information on the side. So I said this before in videos, but if you have um, younger ones in these kind of books, you can just read this part. And then if you have older ones, you can read these, or like you could just generally read this. And then if there's something that piques your interest, just read that section of the smaller text. So I do like that kind of book because it gives you a little bit more flexibility that way. And um, yeah. So pirates. Now, when we think about pirates, we're normally thinking about like, not like pirates have existed from, you know, the time of like ancient history. Julius Caesar was actually captured by pirates at some point um, <laughs> through modern day. There are modern new pirates. But when we're thinking about pirates, I think we normally envision like the 1600s, maybe early 1700s. Um, that's like when it was like the golden age of piracy um, on the seas and especially in the Atlantic. So, um, so that's a fun book, teaches you a lot. P is for pirate. And I don't think we did this in one sitting. It can be a little long. A year on a pirate ship. This is a really good one, especially for the younger ages, um, because it is more of a story and it goes through month by month of what's happening on a pirate ship. You can kind of see down here the different, like it's like a preview of what's gonna happen and what has happened. Now, again, um, being a pirate is um, not safe and it kind of can be violent. So um, keep that in mind when learning about it. But I, in my experience, uh, children seem to enjoy learning about them. There's actually, um, I didn't even realize this, there's like a thing in the back on other book suggestions. So that's kind of cool. Uh, this next book is Pirates Dead Man's, Ta Dead Men's Tales um, by Anne Rooney. It's very cool. It's like a canvas cover and it just, it feels really good. Um, my, I had to get this for my son. I actually gave it as a gift knowing I would use it for our study. Um, but he loves Kraken. So there you go. Um, and this is, it, it's really cool. It's, it goes all over the world. So it features pirates, um, stories of pirates and information on pirates from all over the world. Um, it goes here. It kind of shows you all the different things that go like Barbary Corsairs, Indian pirates, piracy today, golden age pirates, so this is Golden Age of Piracy was from the 16 to the 1720s. Um, so it, it like features different famous historical pirates. Um, and just, yeah, some like things like this. This is the life of a, of a galley slave on a pirate ship. Um, and then it gets the Caribbean. So it goes through kind of area by area. Oh, there's Blackbeard. So you can kind of see so it's lots of cool information in here, um, and it's beautifully done. It's a beautiful book. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but chapters 31 and 32 in the Curiosity Chronicles Early Modern Volume 1 do cover pirates. Um, the first one, I think, is generally on pirates and also touches on privateers, which were, like, paid for pirates. <laughs> pirates commissioned by governments, essentially. And chapter 32 focuses more on Queen Nanny in Jamaica, who defeated the British coming in there. So it's not as related to pirates, but it felt like it was in the same realm. So I included them. I did them together. A couple other things I have. Um, we did read Who Was Blackbeard? So learned a little bit more about Blackbeard. It's another one of these Who Was books. Pirates Past Noon, Magic Treehouse books. Now, at this point, they're a little bit old, actually, for the Magic Treehouse books. Although I would say my, um, my son is currently eight, and I actually might start giving him these to read to himself. They're really good early chapter books um, to read, but they are getting a little bit big. Uh, they are getting a little on the older side to use them for um, for our history studies. So they kind of just give you a flavor of what's going on. And um, it's like a fantasy historical fiction 
context. We also did for read aloud around this time, we did Treasure Island. Now, Treasure Island is really fascinating. Um, I hadn't actually read the book before, but a lot of what you think about pirates probably came from this book. And um, not necessarily is, is it's not necessarily historically accurate to pirates. This was written, I think about 100 years later, it's Robert Louis Stevenson. So I think he was mid 1800s, if I'm remembering correctly, definitely during Victorian times. So um, it's kind of the Victorian times romanticizing of pirates and the golden age of pirates. Um, but it was a fun read for sure. There's a lot of action in here. So um, that's Treasure Island. And then I wanted to show you this. This is, I I got this, it's, I mean, I don't remember which historic site we were at that I got this at, but I did. This is a pieces of eight. So this is actually the full coin. It's a Spanish coin. And this is, I'm, it's not really, sorry, it's not showing it super clearly, but it's a Spanish coin. Um, it is very cool. And then it was broken into different, like it could be broken into as many as eight pieces. Um, and so, yeah, they'll, they'll talk about pieces of eight in different contexts to do with piracy and at the time. So um, this is kind of fun because it has several in here and you could use them for fractions. So we've got halves, um, there's quarters in here, and then there's the eights. Ah, lots of little pieces, so I'm going to put them back in their baggie. Oh, I almost forgot one of my best pirate resources. Pirateology. This is super fun. It does have, like actual information here about pirates, but it's also like from a, the perspective of, um, I don't think it's a real pirate, um, but these, these ology books are super fun. There's lots of stuff in here. And this was my son's as well. He had this way before we did the unit. Um, so we read it as part of the unit, but it's, it's had a lot of love otherwise too. I also found kind of an accompaniment to go with this. That is a model ship. So it's just, it's not a full, it's paper. Um, so we put it together. My son did it mostly on his own, actually. He was seven, I think, at the time. And um, he had a lot of fun. And it came with like a little manual book that went along with it. Now, I will also link below, Tasting History has a How to Eat Like a Pirate video, and he shares hardtack on there. The Townsend Ship's Biscuit video is also great, and I might use that recipe instead, but those are both really good to watch. Um, Max always has, like, history in the middle of his recipe video, so if you haven't seen his videos before, check them out. You don't have to make the, vi you don't have to make the recipe to get something out of the video. I just enjoy watching them just generally. He also has a video on Captain Kidd's Punch, um, which we watched and it makes an alcoholic beverage. So we did not make the beverage, but um, that was kind of fun history too. And then uh, last thing I want to show you for pirates is we've had this game for a while. This is Catan Jr. And this is like a pirate version of Catan. Um, and so it's not necessarily at all historically accurate, but it's about pir pirates and we like to play games. So Catan Jr. So that's everything I have for Pirates. We did spend quite a bit of time on those because that was fun. After Pirates, we did talk a little bit about the French and Indian War. And I definitely would recommend talking about that before moving on to the American Revolution. So um, we didn't really go super in depth on it, but there is uh, chapter 33 in Curiosity Chronicles talks about the origins of the Seven Years War in Europe, which is what is the French and Indian War in the Americas. And then chapter 36 talks about the French and Indian War here in the Americas. I don't have a lot of in extra information on the French and Indian War. It was generally covered in the curriculum. And then um, it's mentioned in a couple other resources that we have, especially regarding the American Revolution, because it's relevant to the American Revolution happening. Um, but I wanted to round out the experience because a lot of those are based on the Europeans' point of view. And obviously it's the French and Indian War, and it's because there were na um, native nations on both sides in the war. And also um, where we live is Abenaki land and the Abenaki, I believe, ended up being split um, and, or they were trying to be neutral. I don't really know. But this is about a boy at the time living in Aben it was an Abenaki boy 
with war written, um, it takes place in 1759, war's happening between the British and the French, and his village at least has not taken sides, but um, the British raid his village and take his mother and sister hostage, kill lots of people. So again, it's war, it's violent. Um, but yeah, I really wanted to pull in that perspective. This is better for a younger group, um, but still um, obviously heavy topic. This is Malian's song. This is beautifully done as well. And this is about a, a raid, I believe it's a British raid, on an Abenaki, on an Abenaki, on an Abenaki village. Um, and the girl survives. And she continues, hopefully you can see that, she continues telling this, like passes down the story. And this is based on Roger's raid on the St. Francis Abenaki in October 4, on October 4th, 1759. So there's a, a note here at the end on the actual history it's based on. Um, so again, it's a sad, awful act, but it's shown in a way that's um, not like overly gruesome. Um, so those are to round out the French and Indian War. Before we wrap up this part one, I did want to mention that we did unit books again, and we did these unit books, for some reason we didn't do the covers, I don't know why, um, but we did them from, you know, this whole time period through the American Revolution. So, um, this is my daughter, so she started this, and this is mainly done in fourth grade, so she, um, we started with, I did the outline of the, that's the east coast of the United States there, and we added these villages in here, or these early settlements in here. This one is the French habitation is the French settlement up there. And then the different topics that we covered, she did different things for. So we've got some drawings, Jamestown, Champlain. And um, I also had her do or either oral written narrations for these. Um, so when there's a picture, it's because she probably did a, just told me her narration. Um, Mayflower. She likes to add extra things when, when allowed. Um, <laughs> She did a written narration on William Penn, so you can see that there, and did a little picture to go along with it. This is her page on pirates. I had them, they designed their own pirate flags. Actually, I think, I think this is hers. I think that was Blackbeard's. I can't remember. One of the, one of the books I showed you has like a bunch of different flags in it. Then we have, she did, I need to tape these in. These are just loose right now. Um, this was her letter. For her Salem witch trial narration and I think for her age I was like that's a little short so I also had her write out a written narration on it because um, she was trying to uh, not have to do as much work so we uh, we did a little more so I yeah I just want to share that with you I enjoy doing the unit study books there's a lot more like different artistic things you could do in there but I think it was a good way to kind of keep all the information together and to track what we were learning on the topic. Okay, so those were a lot of resources. I hope that's helpful. Stay tuned for part two, which is going to be on resources on the American Revolution and founding of the United States government. Bye, friends.